Hey, thanks for coming back to the channel. In this week's video, we're talking about the Sound Tools Cat Box system. Drop stinks are pretty darn cheap these days. If you've got a couple hundred dollars, you can order up a 6, 8, or 12 channel drop snake in all sorts of different lengths and configurations. While they can be a lifesaver to have on any stage, when you start to put drop snakes out for more complex productions, you can start to run into some issues. In productions with set changes, reconfigurations, and the need for things to move on or off stage easily, you'll start to really wish you had disconnects on some of those drop snakes. Being able to leave a set piece or drum riser or left turn wired to a stage box with the ability to unplug the cable when things need to move is a necessity sometimes and just a huge convenience others. While a simple drop snake may be cheap, one with disconnects can be surprisingly expensive and often they come with connectors that are either delicate or bulky or just plain expensive and time consuming to service or terminate. While a large scale analog snake may come with a number of sub boxes or drop snakes in various split configurations, those systems are often out of reach for many small productions and in these days with the digital uh, snake systems we see so often sub snakes with disconnects aren't always on hand seeing these situations arise on real jobs Dave Rad of Rat Sound and Sound Tools set out a few years back to find a solution now there are other XLR over cat solutions on the market notably the radial catapult which I'm really hoping to get in soon to take a look at firsthand and I'll do another video comparing the two then but what separates the cat box from the other options is that it's not a single product it's a well thought out and continually evolving system designed and delivered by folks who work in the field every day and deal firsthand with real world production challenges. With the cat box, you can create a drop snake, an inexpensive splitter, or a distribution solution utilizing standard shielded category 5, 6, or 7 cable. For anyone who's ever attempted to use standard cat 5 cable in a production setting, you might already be turned off to this entire concept simply by how a annoying it is to work with that cable when it doesn't wrap properly or lay flat. This was a huge issue that Sound Tools set out to solve, and they did so very nicely with two new offerings for production-specific Cat5 cable. Even if you have no interest in the Cat box, if you're using Category 5E cable in a production environment, you owe it to yourself to take a look at this. There is the Super Cat Lite, which is what I have here. It's available in purple or black, and it's a shielded, professional-grade cable that acts very much like an XLR cable cable to wrap and to handle. There's also the SuperCat sound cable that adds individually shielded twisted pairs to the equation. With the individual shielding, you gain the ability to use the cat tail break in or out for patching directly to various analog or AES audio, DMX, or intercom equipment. In addition to the cat box, the SuperCat cable, and the cat tails, there's a 12-channel cat rack available that is essentially three cat boxes combined into a single rack space, and there's also a wall cat which offers 4XLR in either the male or female configuration on a standard double gang wall plate for installation work. I'll absolutely be covering the cat tails and some of the other components of this system in future videos, but for right now let's take a closer look at the cat box and the purple Super Cat Lite Cat 5E cable. Now first impressions are everything with professional gear, and these really hit the mark in the same way that the Rat Sniffer Sender and other Sound Tools products have in the past for me. There is nothing about these at all that suggests anyone other than the people using them had a say in the design. I can't point to a single part or design choice here that would suggest cost or profitability was put ahead of function in this system. The anodized aluminum case is really nicely made, and it makes these boxes much lighter than you'd expect when you first pick them up. No expense was spared at all on the connectors either, as you'll find genuine uh, Neutrik parts for both the XLR and the Ethercon in and out. Construction is simple and serviceable with positive drive fasteners all around. There's 16 fasteners total on this little box should you ever need to open them up in the field. Now the Super Cat light cable is much the same story being a four twisted pair 26 gauge cable surrounded by a braided shield and flame retardant polyurethane jacket that provides added protection and flexibility. You should take a look at Dave Rat's personal uh, video about these cables and he explains the jackets and all the different work that went into finding 
finding this exact combination of materials to make this cable perform as well as it does. I had a chance to travel with these and use them in some real world settings this past month and I purposefully did not baby them at all. I wanted to see how they stood up to typical production life. I sent these on ahead of me across the country in a truck destined for a gig I'd be flying to. I stuck them just in a padded laptop sleeve with enough protection to keep them moderately safe. They arrived just fine and were pressed into use in a corporate setup as a drop snake between video playback record world and the primary audio snake to front a house. Now while this wasn't an extreme environment by any means, it is pretty typical of how gear gets treated in the real world. Uh, these were out on a show with a whole bunch of other rental gear, multiple different companies working uh, as far as audio, video, and lighting uh, right on top of each other. We're running cable runs past each other. Uh, this cable, for instance, was getting stepped on uh, quite regularly. He was getting walked across as you know as other cables were laid and it was really just a typical example of what gear goes through in either a rental or a real world environment and it survived perfectly there i obviously didn't expect it to not survive that it came back to me looking pretty much the way i handed it out uh, there's a couple of scuffs on the anodized aluminum but nothing that would bother me whatsoever i do think over time they will wear a little bit but nothing that would ever affect any sort of usability these things are built very very well and I'd imagine they could take quite a beating the aluminum case anyway before you would have any issues. Now obviously these are a very simple product they're passive there's no active electronics in them when we look inside them here you can see that they're made on a very nice clean PCB they are available in either all XLR male or all XLR female and the RJ45 connections are in parallel so if you had it set up in a typical snake configuration with a female input side leading down the cat5 to the male output side you could use the parallel output to go to another male output and duplicate those outputs. So what you put down channel one, no matter how many of these boxes you stack together, it's gonna come out channel one. You're not adding channels, you're adding instances of that channel. So again, if you wanted to distro out four signals to multiple points, say down a press riser, you could drop one of these every 10, 15 feet and get those same four channels repeating as you connected more boxes. One thing I'd love to see in the future, and I reached out to sound tools about this because it would be really handy to have a box that had two males and two females on the same box and that would make a really convenient drop for something like video playback where they might need a couple of lines of playback and a couple of lines of turns for record or if you're dropping something to a musician that had multiple instruments one or two mics that they needed plus uh, wired in-ear returns or a wired powered monitor so looking at these inside it would be very very simple just to break out the soldering iron pop off a couple of the PCB mounted uh, XLRs and swap them into the other box and I may do that in the future. You can see that there's a little push button here that's a ground lift, that's a global ground lift for the entire box and it is recessed in so you can get at it with a little poker and not uh, get at it otherwise if you don't intend to. And the only other thing that I'd really like to see in the future is an option to fly these. Now you could accomplish this any number of ways but if there was just like a little tab with a hole through it of some sort that you could insert some sort of flying hardware, just a bolt or something of that sort sort would be really helpful for attaching these to a truss for distroing out a signal to any number of things. It could either be DMX or audio, but I'd love to see just like a little slot that you could run a safety chain through and some sort of hole that you could run a bolt through. It would be fantastic for things like uh, powered line arrays. Uh, you could definitely use the cattails, but at that point you would need to have the uh, individually shielded, the, the higher grade and more expensive Cat5 cable, the Super Cat Sound version, and it'd just be really nice these cat boxes are an excellent uh, little problem solver and to be able to also rig it or mount it to something would be really cool I think as more people use these more people are going to want to use them for more things and that's really my biggest complaint about this system that I've had for review is not having more of it you know I, I could use a whole bunch more of them it would be fantastic to have at least two of each gender I'd love to have the super cat cable in a whole bunch of different lengths that's my biggest complaint so far is that when you get these you're going to find a whole bunch of uses for them and you'll wish you had more and you'll want to keep buying them. I contacted Sound Tools and all these custom Supercat cables are available even though the website says uh, you know predetermined lengths they will make patch cables uh, for you and sell those to you as you need them so if you just need a one foot jumper or a three foot jumper or whatever reach out to them they'll definitely make it and I think as more people use these and more people get their hands on them you'll just come up with more and more ways to use them and more little problems that they can solve and like I said if I buy some I think I will definitely be uh, swapping out some of the XLR connectors internally.
internally so I can have a set for dropping sends and returns to the same place because that's a much more common issue in my type of work doing corporate stuff and working with small bands on stages and and things like that to be able to pick up two channels from a musician or from a position on stage and then send back two returns would be really cool shoot I'd be interested to see one in a configuration that had three sends with one return that would be uh, really helpful in certain situations as well a musician with multi you know two or three mics and then a single powered wedge you know that'd just be a handy thing to have especially at this price so that's really it this isn't so much a comprehensive review as it is a first look and a look inside and just kind of talking about what these are and uh, it's one of those things that's a great little problem solver to have in your kit whether you just have a pair of them and a 50 foot cable like I do uh, currently or if you buy into like a whole ton of them you're going to find yourself pulling them out and solving weird little problems with them so I would definitely check out sound tools website uh, take a look at these the cattails should be shipping sometime in april uh, which is really exciting i can't wait to get a look at those firsthand and try those out and uh, otherwise you can reach out to sound tools directly with any questions they're super responsive i'm not affiliated with them in any way i just really like what they're doing uh, the sniffer sender is one of my favorite little tools to have in my bag and these are quickly becoming uh, a second favorite just of something to have on hand for certain jobs uh, again they do just solve a lot of problems so that's it for this time thanks so much for watching and let me know below if you've used any of these rat cat family of products before if you've got uh, any of them personally if any companies you work for are using them or buying them or planning to uh, in the future let us know what you're using them for I, I really think that everybody's going to find different uses for these whether it's audio or lighting or intercom or just general problem solving I think it'd be really neat to see and to hear what everybody thinks about them as a uh, as a tool to have in your in your kit thanks so much to sound tools and to rat sound and to dave rat and to madeline over at sound tools for reaching out and sending these over like i said i'm not affiliated with them at all i'm just a fan of what they do i really really like that they are uh, making products for people that work in the industry and, and they really know what they're doing they're not just sitting in an office coming up with this stuff these are folks that are out doing this every day for a living at the top of the industry and they're making little tools to make your life easier and i think that's a really special thing especially these days thanks to everybody who supports these videos by either watching liking or clicking the affiliate links below it really helps and to those folks who support the channel directly on patreon you are amazing so thanks very much for doing that if anybody else wants to follow any of those types of links just head down to the description below. <laughs>